Hey everyone, in today's video we get to play a game called What Did I Screw Up? We have a sine wave right here, and uh, well, it doesn't look right. And that's because I just completely restored this power amplifier board and replaced every single transistor with a uh, modern substitution. And uh, my suspicion is there is a bad substitution somewhere in here. So, this is the volume knob, I'll turn it down. Uh, we've got the scope hooked up to a load resistor back here. This is coming right out of the speaker. And uh, we get, you know, that garbage. That's not good. And uh, let me translate this to sound for you. We can actually turn on the speaker because I've got them hooked up. So we listen. So we get that nasty buzz. There's a very clear indication of what's happening. Okay, I'll stop that now. This happens on both speakers, and it happens at the end of the power amplifier section. So, let's see if I can do this one-handed here. So here we are at the load resistor, right? And we've got ground going to ground with our red little jumper here. So, let's connect to the uh, the output right there and we see that it's definitely you know bad at uh, the output right there but what if we connect to the input right where it goes into the power amplifier okay so we're on it coming off of the preamp and if we take a look here we see it's clean very nice we've isolated it to the power amplifier so my question for all of you is what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong to make it so that when we're looking at the signal coming out of the power amplifier we get all this nasty stuff right here? I'll give you a moment to pause and write your comment or your guess or whatever. Alright, get out your schematics folks. So, what I've done here so far is, uh, I've turned up the volume so that, you know, if I touch here, I can see what's going on. You know, i got that nasty stuff there. But, if I come over here to the other side, I can kind of follow along with these transistors here. Like, here is, so here is H702, because we've got our load resistor on that side of the amp. We see it's clean. It's exactly what's coming out of the preamplifier right after that first capacitor, C701. So if we move on to H704, the next transistor, but if we go to the collector, that's a little noisy. If we go to the collector, it looks kind of clean, but if we look closely, we can see that there's nasty stuff happening there. So. My thought is that uh, KSC 2690 might not have been a good sub for 2SC1384. It might be overdriving something, so let's replace H704 and put the original back in and see if that fixes anything. Alright, let's see if it did anything. Hmm, we're closer. The, uh, the nasty stuff is gone. Let's take a listen. Let's turn both speakers back on. Okay, I'll just go to that one. Okay, so we still have some stuff going on there. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. But, we're definitely on the right track because, uh, we've replaced H704, which is on the uh, the right channel. So H703 is going to be your left channel equivalent, and if we go to the left channel and listen, you know, that's happening there. No buzz, buzz, no buzz, buzz. So, let it be known. KSC 2690 is a bad choice for
for your 2215B when you're replacing H703 or 704. I'm just getting all kinds of fun videos out of this restoration. I was trying to set the uh, trimming resistor on the uh, power amplifier board and I was trying to get some of these little probes in on uh, the resistor you're supposed to measure a voltage across and I shorted the resistor to the heat sink and now when I turn the receiver on on the dim bulb we get a nice bright light bulb which means there is a likely a shorted output in here somewhere. Uh, power from this thing is going directly to ground. It's uh, it's bad. I've already blown a few fuses. Uh, the first one I didn't realize I blew it until a minute later. Second one I should have had this on the dim bulb in the first place. And then the third one I uh, forgot to unplug the receiver and turn it off and just blew the fuse the minute I started screwing it in. So This is the kind of stuff that happens when you're working on this stuff. Guess I'm gonna pull the outputs and see what happens. Okay, I got one of them out and uh, I already found short circuit on red, green, blue. That means this whole thing is just a terminal block at this point. Total junk. This thing is done for. Let's see if its partner has the same fate. Same fate, folks. Short circuit on red, green, blue. So, it just goes to show. Don't short circuit your uh, whatever this is. I'll show you what I did. So, it says in the service manual to measure the voltage across that guy and adjust this until that's 10 millivolts. Well, what's not here right now is this uh, this little pad thing here and uh, when I was sticking my little uh, thing in here I took the clip got the edge of this clip on the bar and the lead and that was enough to completely destroy two 8 amp 250 volt output transistors all the way around immediately. That's insane. So, but really it's not insane. That's just kind of how this stuff works. So, all we can do is uh, replace the ones we just replaced, put this back together, and uh, continue onward with our uh, investigation into why it's not working. Good news, everyone! I think I fixed it. Uh, turns out those 2690s were bad. I talked about that already. I took out all the 2690s, put the 1384s back, and uh, now we have a nice clean sine wave through the entire uh, volume range. So I'll just kind of zoom in here. You know, you can see it right there. It was around this stage before we were seeing kind of the, the nasty stuff right around here. But as we go all the way up into clipping, you know, keep going higher and higher. There's our clipping right there. So, that's good. Uh, this receiver doesn't have an adjustment for uh, the clipping right here, which is kind of interesting. The 2230 does, and that's kind of nice. So, this is just kind of what it is. We, we clip at the bottom here first on uh, this channel. And if we switch to the other channel real quick, these both have 8 ohm load resistors on them. Um, same deal, it's starting to clip at the bottom there. But, uh, yeah. Both channels had that weird stuff going on with the uh, sine wave. So, glad to see that everything is okay. And uh, just to prove it, I'll turn on the speakers. I know y'all love that sound. That's my wife's favorite when I start doing this all night. So, yeah. That was the issue. It was a poorly spec transistor. I guess this is a good opportunity to go into uh, something I notoriously ignore and uh, pay for in times like this. People who are more experienced than me that are on YouTube, that are in the forums, are always saying don't just blindly substitute transistors 
you know, that list on Audio Karma, that's just a suggestion. That's a starting place. That's not a uh, end-all, be-all, perfect list for every application. Because as you just saw, every application here is different. We got away with it with the power supply, if you saw the restoration video, but we did not get away with it with the amplifier, because what's going on in that power amplifier is pretty specific. I almost didn't touch the transistors, and I'm kind of glad I did touch them, because having this failure is just another reminder that, uh, you know, it's not always going to be what you think it's going to be. You need to think about these things and read the spec sheets and try to make as much sense out of them as you can. So that's what I got. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.